How are you doing? This is UK Fish ID videos. For these series of films, I'm going to show you how to identify various British fish, both from the sea and fresh water. We're going to go through what they eat, where they live, and how to identify them from similar species. If you'd like to learn more about identifying UK fish, then why not get my latest book? It's available online and in local bookshops. There's a link in the description if you're interested. This week I'm going down the slippery hole that is gobies. These are one of the most difficult fish to ID in the UK. There's lots of species including some rare ones. So let's try and get through this together. Gobies are a tricky one. Let's get into it. Let's take a look at the gobies. These can be some of the hardest fish to ID in the British Isles. So I'm going to try and do my best to go through them all. I'm not going to cover every single species of goby, but I will try and mention all of the common ones and the ones that you're likely to encounter. I'm going to start with the really small gobies and work his way up. So let's start with the common goby, which in of itself is slightly confusing because they're not always that common. It's very similar in size and shape to sand gobies with two dorsal fins, a black triangle shape on the base of the tail and a sandy coloration. What sets it apart is the common goby has a black mark on the base of the pectoral fin, which sand gobies lack. The common goby is very similar to the sand goby, being very small and almost translucent in colour. Commons are normally darker than sand gobies though, and lack the four white saddles along their back that the painted goby has. Like all gobies, it has two dorsal fins, the front dorsal fin having light brown horizontal bars and a black spot at the rear base of it. It does not have a white or blue halo around the black spot like the sand goby does. Common gobies also have two faint stripes just below the eye, which sand gobies lack. Males will look after the eggs when they're on shells, rocks or gravel and stand guard over them until they hatch, which is normally done in the summer. Common gobies live in muddy or sandy areas and can push up into estuaries and brackish waters, though not full fresh water. They tend to live in very shallow water. As the name would suggest, it's fairly widespread around the British coastline, though it thins out around northern Scotland. In terms of size, it only gets to a few centimetres, but is typically smaller than sand gobies. So that brings me on to the next one, which is the sand goby, which is the fish that you're most likely to confuse common gobies with. Overall, it has the typical tapered body of a goby with a large head and eyes on the top of it. Coloration is sandy coloured with a mix of pale yellows, browns and blacks. Male sand gobies are sexually dimorphic, sporting a dark black blue spot with a white rim on the edge of the first dorsal fin and four reddish brown crossbars. These gobies have four vertical dark lines along the flanks of the body and a dark triangular mark in the front of the tail. Over sand, the species can look almost translucent. Sand gobies create a nest over the sand, normally centered around a shell. They can create grids around it and wait for a female to show up to lay her eggs in the disused shell. As the name suggests, it's mostly restricted to sandy areas close to shore, though it can be found on muddy bottoms also. This species prefers more saline environments, unlike the common goby. It's commonly found across most of the UK, and although it gets to a similar size as the common goby, is normally a little bit bigger. Next up is the painted goby. It's similar in appearance to other small gobies, has a mottled coloration with eyes on top of the head, two dorsal fins on the back, and large pectoral fins to help it swim on the sea floor. A key identification feature for this species is a row of black spots on the dorsal fin. Colours for this species can change depending on habitat. If it lives over silt or mud, it will be quite dark and muted in coloration, but if it's on sand, it will be quite bright. A good identifier is that the scales each have a fine black edge, so it can look like a fine crisscross pattern across the whole fish. The dorsal has bands of red, orange, brown and cream, and the body has at least four cream saddle markings along the back. Although we tend to think of the fish as silent, many do make vocalisations and the painted goby is no exception. The male will drum near nest sites, making a low humming sound. This humming is used to attract a female. 
It prefers sandy and rocky beds up to 50 meters deep. And juveniles might get trapped in rock pools, but typically in deeper water. It's found across the UK, close to shore. Again, it's a similar size to sand and common gobies, around that five to seven centimeter mark when fully grown. The last of our common micro gobies is the two spot goby. It has a large spot on the base of the tail, which is rimmed with a pale white color. The flanks are a mix of reds, blues, and whites. Fins are almost transparent, and the males have a second black spot behind the pectoral fin. They have relatively large eyes that are on the side of the head, not on the top like most gobies. Their underside, around the gut area, is a mix of cream and gold, and this can be an easy way to distinguish them from pollock fry when looking at them in the water. Like the painted goby, they have defined cream saddle markings on their back. What sets this goby apart from the others is it tends to hang around in shoals and typically in the water column as opposed to being more sedentary and solitary like other gobies. It's also much smaller, only around two or three centimeters, though they can get to five. It's not the smallest goby, however, that goes to the gullet's goby, which is absolutely minuscule, not getting much more than a centimeter or two in length. Although these are relatively widespread, they're very rare, or at least under recorded, because they're too small for most anglers to catch and most scuba divers miss them, but they are in the UK also. So that was the very small micro gobies. Let's have a look at the macro gobies that get a little bit bigger. All of these fish I'm gonna mention typically will get over 10 centimeters. So size is one way to help you ID these gobies from the ones I've previously mentioned, as none of them will get this big. The first one up is the black goby. They have a robust head with a large mouth and a dark gray to black markings across the body. The first dorsal fin is pointed with black spots on it big pectoral fins and a typical goby shape of a long oval. The males have an elongated sail-like dorsal, while the female's dorsal will be shorter and have a black edge to it. They have a fused pelvic fin and the anal fin underneath the fish will always be dark in colour, even if the fish is more pale. They're a robust goby with black blotches along the body. They do have sexual dimorphism, especially pronounced in the spring and early summer when they're spawning, as the males will be jet black and the females will be lighter. They're widespread across most of the UK, but less frequent on the east coast of Scotland. It prefers muddy and sandy areas in particular around seagrass beds and estuaries. They can get to around 13 centimeters in length. The goby that most gets confused with the black goby is the rock goby. They're a dark colored goby overall with some mottling specks of brown and yellow across the body. Key features to look for when identifying it are the pale orange to yellow band on the first dorsal fin and it has branches around its nostril that appear like little lumps, though this can be tricky to spot. The tail is rounded like most gobies. Males can turn almost jet black when spawning, which can lead to confusion with black gobies. They get to around eight centimeters, so a little bit smaller than black gobies as well. In terms of distribution, they're common along the western and southern coasts of mainland Britain, though largely absent from the east coast. They tend to live up to their name, preferring rocky areas, gravel beds, and can be found in rock pools lower down the shoreline. It's common around harbour walls, breakwaters, and other man-made structures. Next up is the giant goby. They have a greyish to olive brown colour, with dark blotches that appear along and below the lateral midline. The edges of the dorsal, tail and anal fins are light greyish in colour. Breeding males are darker in colour than females, often turning black and having a blue edge to their rear dorsal and tail fins. They've got large mouths to swallow prey whole and a sucker on the belly to help attach to rocks. Now giant gobies live up to their name, getting up to 27 centimetres, so they are by far the biggest goby in the British Isles. In terms of distribution, they're largely restricted to southwest England, especially Cornwall, where it's locally abundant, and the Channel Islands. They're an intertidal fish, and it prefers rock pools higher up the shoreline, and can tolerate some fresh water coming into those pools. Although much more common in rock pools and gullies, Increasingly, these fish are being found in more urban environments, such as harbours and sea walls. 
A slightly less common goby, although arguably relatively easy to ID, it's the leopard spotted goby. Unlike some gobies, the leopard spotted goby is quite a secretive species and tends to hide away a lot of the time, making some believe it was a rare species, but in fact it's just more likely under recorded. They're quite a distinct goby species, with its namesake being black spots across the body and a pinky blue colour covering the rest of the body. They have a black spot on the rear of the dorsal fin and tail fin, and the eyes are close together on top of the head. It's also got quite large lips. They can get up to about 10 centimetres. In terms of distribution, relatively widespread across British waters, but largely absent from the east coast of England. The small goby prefers rocky areas, especially with crevices and ledges, to hide away in, being more active after dark. It can be found in the intertidal zone, especially on big spring low tides. The next one is the red mouth goby, and no guesses for why it's called that. It has a large red mouth which extends over the head and dissipates along the body. The rest of the body has black blotches and a sandy coloration. They also have black sensory papillae. Not sure if I'm saying <laughs> how the bloody hell do you say that? Papillae on the head used to help detect prey. I don't know if I said that right. Otherwise, standard goby shape and proportions with two dorsal fins, a broad tail, and an oval body. The first dorsal fin has white piping on the edges. Although it's called a red mouth goby, not all of them have red mouths, and it isn't a sexual dimorphism thing either. Both males and females can have a red face. Check for the black lines on the face, which are a giveaway for this species. They can be quite a bold fish, not shying away from divers and almost being quite inquisitive in nature. They can get up to 15 centimetres, so they're quite a chunky goby. What's interesting about this goby is its distribution. It's largely absent from Britain. In fact, I can't find any records of it ever being caught in Britain. But if you go to Southwest Island, it's quite common in certain areas. And if you go to the Mediterranean coastline of Portugal and Spain, it's quite common there. So it's almost peculiar that we don't have it in places like the Scilly Isles and Cornwall, though I think it's only a matter of time. Its habitat preferences are generally rocky. It likes to hide in rocks and crevices and ambush prey. So the last goby that I'm going to go in depth on is the Cooch's goby. It has two dorsal fins, with the second one being quite pronounced. Overall colour is a dull brown with patches of black and yellow to help blend in with mud. They have a dark spot on the cheeks and a rounded tail fin. The spots also continue along the lateral line. It looks like a cross between a rock goby and a black goby and it's easily mistaken for both. The front dorsal fin is short and has brown bands with a light cream edge. This is the easiest way to tell it's not a black goby. The second dorsal fin is elongated and has a light cream edge to it as well. The head is fairly small and it has a mottled brown, black and cream coloration. They get to around 6 centimetres, so not as big as some of these other gobies. It's largely restricted to the southwest of England and western coast of Ireland, with Cornwall being a stronghold. Now as I mentioned there are lots of other goby species, so I'm just going to do a few honourable mentions. That is the Stevens goby, the Jeffreys goby, the Transparent goby, the Crystal goby and the Fry's goby. Most of these are not encountered very often, Occasionally scuba divers see them, and I'm not aware, apart from Stevens, of many anglers catching them either. So if we're going to go through the key identification features for some of those previous gobies, how do we do that? Well, common and sand gobies are often confused, so how to tell those apart as we've mentioned. With common gobies, it's the face. They've got two dark stripes on the head, which sand gobies won't have. With common gobies, they have more of a tadpole shape, a big belly, and then the tail tapers off, whereas sand gobies are more like a carrot shape, just a very thin tapering shape. There's also habitat. Generally, common gobies are more likely to be found in an estuary, whereas sand gobies are more likely to be found on sandy saline environments. Leopard spot gobies are pretty distinct, so if you find a spotty goby that's pinky or blue, it's going to be a leopard spot goby. The size of giant gobies is a clue, but they also have this kind of olive speckling colour that most other gobies lack in British waterways. Rock gobies have a yellow bit on the dorsal fins, and black gobies don't have that, while black gobies also have that wispy bit, they're the only goby that have that. So relatively easy to tell apart if you can get a good look at the dorsal fins on those. 
Don't forget, if you want to learn more about UK fish, do grab a copy of my book. There's a link in the description if you want to find out more. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing to the channel. It takes two seconds for you and it really helps the channel out. Go and have a look at some of the other UK Fish ID videos we've got on the channel, as well as the underwater and angling content on here. See you next time. Cheers. If you enjoyed this vid, why not check out this other video right here? If you can, please subscribe to the channel. It only takes a couple of seconds and it really helps me out. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.